Hi everybody, Richard from Electric Classic Cars here. Uh, we're going to start doing a series on YouTube called Workshop Walkarounds, where we just take an in-depth view at some of the cars that we've converted here at Electric Classic Cars, not just the electrification side of things, but also just the general sort of like journey that the car has been through since it's actually come into the workshop. So we're going to start this series with this beautiful BMW 02. It's actually a 1602. This came to us as a what we call a good 10 footer. So from 10 feet away it kind of looked okay and as you got closer you saw some bubble rust here, you saw some issues there and you know it was just needing a full on restoration. So this has been on a full journey with us here at Electric Classic Cars. It's gone through a complete bare metal restoration. It's had some styling and bodywork enhancements I think I'll call them um, as well as the general sort of refit of the interior, re-trim and the electrification side of things. So let's start with the actual what's happened to the physical car if you like. So this, this came to us essentially, it was red when it came in here and it had some rust issues on here, the door bottoms had gone, um, but it was basically a solid car. So it's gone through, as I say, a full restoration here. We chose this beautiful colour along with a customer, um, which is a, a Volkswagen colour from their Mark II GTI. This also used to be a um, Porsche colour as well in the 70s. It's one of my favourite greens. And it really accentuates the chrome work that we put on this. So there's a lot of bodywork um, uh, restoration that's gone into this, and also some enhancements which you'll probably uh, pick up on, especially you BMW fans out there. So we put a chin spoiler on this, um, and this chin spoiler is also been blended in with the actual arches and you'll notice these arches aren't um, uh, standard either. These are actually uh, gold GTI arches. So there's, you can get bubble arches for the O2 which are on some of the race cars but they're quite an aggressive sort of like uh, round bubble arch come out like this and I felt it needed something a little less understated if you like so uh, I saw some of you have done this online and I thought yeah that's quite a nice Touch. So we put these gold TTI arches on the front and back, but actually that ended up being a little bit of a problem for the bumpers. So if you come around here, I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so from this angle you can see some of the challenges we've had with doing things like bodywork enhancements on classic cars. So these arches have gone on, but the classic bumper actually, or the standard bumper if you like, actually comes and finishes about here. But with these arch extensions on, it kind of like used to hit there. So what we've done, we wanted to keep the classic chrome bumper, but we've had to cut and shut it. So you can see here the, the bumper ends uh, quite shortly there, and then we've capped it, and then it's gone off for re-chroming. And you can also see from this angle that the way that we've blended in the chin spoiler as well onto the front. So just sticking with the bumpers, just some other little um, changes we've done. Usually this has a black rubber sort of like um, extension on the outside of it, which is, it, it's okay, it's practical obviously, but it doesn't help with the lines of the car. So I wanted a clean chrome bumper on this. So what we've actually done is taken that plastic um, or black rubber uh, trim off the outside of the bumper, we've filled all the holes where the actual trim is held in place, and just ninished all that back nice and smooth and just got the whole bumper all just one chrome uh, smooth piece then. So looking at the front of the car, just some of the lines we've sort of tidied up if you like. Um, again, we've, we've taken off these rubber trims that used to sit on here and also here was actually some overriders with again some big chunky rubber bits and I just felt that it didn't really help with the lines of the car. So it's such a beautiful front on an O2. A little bit the same as um, on an E9, for instance. So we just took all that off, filled in the holes, smoothed it, got it all re-chromed. Um, this kidney bowl grill here was in a bit of a state as well, so we've done some work just to reshape that because they're pretty much like rocking horse poo to try to find. So we've just uh, restored that, um, uh, given the grills uh, a little bit of a, a once-over with some black paint as well. And, I feel that the simplicity of the front now is just, um, you know, the elegant simplicity of the design has really come to the fore now with getting rid of some of the trinkets like these things. But I think adding this 
um, chin spoiler also adds a little bit of an aggressive style to the front as well because otherwise the, the front of the BMW 1602 just kind of like drifts off into nowhere so this bringing it forward gives it a little bit of an aggressive stance as well so I think we've nailed it on the front of the car as far as the styling is concerned without spoiling the classic nature of the old two. So moving around to the side here, just some more little styling enhancements that we've done. It's, it's, it's nothing complex, it's just kind of trying to bring the simple, elegant lines of the O2 a little bit more to the fore by dropping off some of the you know, trim that's not really required. So this is a typical example. So this used to sit around about here, and obviously used to have another piece here, another piece at the front, but it doesn't really do anything for the car, uh, I thought. So, that's come off just to kind of leave it nice and simple and also from this angle, move out of the way, you can see the, the stance that we wanted to get to. I wanted a practical stance because this is going to be used very often on the road, I'd probably say as a daily driver for the customer. So having it too low, it wouldn't really help um, for the practicality of driving this down in London for instance. So, you know, I think we've nailed it on the stance as well, not too low, but low enough to just make it look bang on as, as far as a, a sporty little um, O2, I think. So we've come around to the rear three quarter here now and just going to take you through some of the other enhancements that we've done at this side of the car. So again, the rear bumper, we've essentially taken off that black trim, that rubber trim, filled all the holes, re-chromed it and actually cut and shut it a little bit short here again just to be able to clearance the wide wing. You'll notice it's still got the fuel filler cap but no fuel in this car, so, or if it is, it's electrons. So what we've done is we've repurposed that as the charging socket. So I think putting an aftermarket black sort of uh, electric charge socket on there was gonna spoil the line, so we just repurposed the original BMW stamped petrol filler cap. And up here, we've got a little emblem which isn't normally on there for a 1602. So here on the C pillar is an emblem which is not normally there on an O2. It's actually lifted from a BMW E9 of a similar sort of era in the 1970s. I'll show you where that sits normally on an E9 now because we have one actually sitting next door to this car. And here is that emblem actually in its rightful home on a BMW E9 C pillar. So here we are in the interior of the O2 and it's just a beautiful place to be. We've got these lovely figure-hugging Recaro seats that have been completely retrimmed in red leather along with the rear seats. And that red leather has been carried through then to the door cards where we've got a red leather on black leather combo with some chrome accents just to really lift it. And this red leather just perfectly goes with the green exterior. So some of the other touches we've done in the interior, we've got this beautiful polished aluminium steering wheel with the BMW logo. Uh, the dial cluster needed lifting a little bit, it had this horrible plastic wood effect um, to it. So what we've done, we've made a custom aluminium, polished aluminium uh, cover that goes over the dial, so it kind of matches the whole steering wheel as well. So moving down to the centre console here, you can see we've got a infotainment system in here which has got your full sat nav, um, radio, um, it's even got a, a reverse camera built into it as well and also down here we're starting to touch now on the electrification side of things we've got actual 21st century fuel gauge which is your battery monitor that tells me I've got 79% left in the battery and just while we're here as well one of the other little touches we've done is heated seats both in the front and the rear as well and the controls for those are there So just before we leave the interior, I just wanted to show you the back seat area because there's some little enhancements that we've done in here which are worth mentioning. So you can see obviously the red leather rear seat and side uh, panels we've done, but we've also sculpted in an armrest in here which incorporates in the rear speakers. But here's a little trick which you don't normally get in an, uh, an old BMW O2. It might have rear seat belts, but you probably don't have retracting ones. So we've had to do some clever little tweaks to actually get this to fit. And if you step outside the car, I'll show you what I mean. So what we've had to actually do to get a retractable seat belt in here is in the rear parcel shelf there, you can see we've kind of hidden uh, the retractor in the boot area and the actual seat belt just travels through that slot. 
back to the outside of the car then. So before I get into the electrification side of things, because you're all probably wondering, when is he going to start talking about motors and batteries? Nearly there. Just one more thing I want to cover, and it's an important topic. Whenever you're adding all that extra performance onto a classic car with the electrification side of things and that big powerful electric motor, you've got to address brakes and handling because otherwise it's, it's quite frankly dangerous to be able to put that additional power on without controlling it. So on the front of this car we've got an upgraded big disc brake setter. On the rear we've left the drum brakes as is and you're probably wondering why has he not upgraded the rear brakes as well. Well you've got to bear in mind you've got regenerative braking off the motor on the rear wheels so it's kind of like turbocharging the brakes when you've got that regenerative braking of the motor adding on deceleration and braking to the rear braking force. So we've left the rear brakes as is, we've just made sure they're in good order. We've put the big disc brake upgrade on the front. We've also got upgraded anti-roll bars front and rear. We've got a uh, camber kit which kind of improves the camber on the front as well to help it go around corners and believe me this thing is like it's on the rails around corners now and it also helps to have some wider wheels and sticky tyres on as well which you've noticed we put on as well. So now finally we can cover off the electrification side of things. So let's have a look at the, the front. Unfortunately it's not much to see because in that black box we've got eight LG Chem modules, they're 2.5 kilowatt hours each. Now it's in a pretty generic looking black box, it's all sealed because obviously that's for safety purposes but also to, to help protect it from the actual environment of the British weather for instance. So there's not much to see there, so in here as I say it's eight LG Chem batteries, that's 20 kilowatt hours. Uh, underneath there is a Hyper 9 motor which is about 120 horsepower which you might think oh, that's not that actually that powerful but don't forget it's got 175 pound foot of torque which is available instantly so you've got maximum torque from 0 RPM with an electric motor and that's bolted to the original, mo uh, original gearbox and again with electric motors you're probably wondering why is it actually bolted to the original gearbox do you have to change gear all the time well no is the answer to that you can change gear but realistically when you're actually owning one of these cars you probably use maybe second or third to start off with and you might just leave it in that all day especially in the city but then once you're on the highway you can shift it into fourth or fifth so you really only use about two gears so that's the front battery box not much to see really but we've got half of the battery pack in the front and the other half in the rear. I think it's only fitting that we end this with the boot. So we've got the rear pack in here, so this is half of the battery pack again. And having that split between half in the front, half in the back really helps with that optimum 50-50 weight distribution which we always aim for. So you've got 20 kilowatt hours in here, so that's 40 kilowatt hours total. We haven't done any range tests in this yet, but I think 40 kilowatt hours total is going to be touching around about 150 mile range, I think. Um, you've still got a decent sized boot space in here as well, and I think we're not quite finished really in here yet. There's maybe a little bit more trimming we'll do in here as well with a bit more work either side of the battery box. The spare wheel has actually gone as well, so there's a bit more storage space down there as well. So I think it's time to finish this episode and get in the car and take it for a spin. Well, there you go. That's the end of this workshop walk around episode. I hope you liked it. Hope it didn't ramble on too much. Leave some comments down the bottom as to you know what things that can possibly improve for you guys uh, for future episodes. But at this point, it's adios, and I'm off to enjoy this lovely classic BMW 02 Electric. See you later.